In this uh, episode, I'm going to show you how uh, the basics of timeline and very simple animation of properties. Uh, properties are how you move things, how you make them walk, and so forth. Uh, to make it walk, it's actually going to animate you know, potentially hundreds of joints and fingers and so forth all at the same time, uh, which we'll get into a little later on. We're just going to start with some very simple animation here. So to actually um, do um, for creating videos, what I'm going to be using is the Cinemachine package from Unity. And Cinemachine has got this concept called a timeline. And so there's a timeline window or a timeline panel you can open up. So to create a timeline, we're going to create a object in our scene. In a complex scene, I may actually have multiple timelines because um, I want to reuse the scene for different um, situations for the characters are there. But I'm just going to create a simple one here at the moment. And then if I come down and look at the timeline panel, it's sort of saying, oh, you want a new timeline? And you basically just click, 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 uh, create, and it'll offer to create the file for you. Okay, I was just cut out some of the thing, boring parts there, getting into the right directory, but uh, now we're going to save this timeline uh, asset into the tree, and so there's actually an object, an asset stored on disk behind this particular timeline object. This is more of a handle to it. Now, if we want to animate Unichan, uh, Unity Chen, we basically drag her into the scene and then pick an animation track. This now is um, has got the ability to start recording properties of um, uh, Unity Chen. Now, if you click the red button, it turns on recording, and what I'm going to actually do is it, it's now turned red and it's going to remember a first position so I'm going to move oops well, that was a timeline I'm going to select the unity chan and move her off in the distance and then I'm going to go forward in time and I'm just going to bring her forward and you'll notice these two points and what it's done is it's remembered it's updated the transform position of the unity tank character, the red string, it's remembering these and recording them, and then I'm going to turn off recording. And so now, if I slide between the two, it moves unity between the two time points. Now, that's all well and nice, of course, but she's not moving. Um, and so uh, this is the basic principle of animation, but if I double click just to show a little bit more, it's recorded the position and rotation properties of Unity Chan, and that's all. Um, to record an animation of the full character going through a walk motion, it's got all of the joints and bones of the um, Unity avatar character. And so that's, there's, it could be like a hundred of them. I actually think there might be 52 to be precise. And so there's gonna be lots here. Now, rather than having to repeat that every single time, it's got the concept of animation clips. And so what I'm going to do is come back to this timeline and I'm going to discard this one and start again. I'm going to drag Unity Chan down and create an animation track. And I'm going to this time do a search for a walk behavior. Now, um, if you click over here, you can actually limit it by to animation clips. Um, we look through and find something like walk, walk forward. I'm just going to expand this out a little bit more. So this one, I've got two walk forwards, and I'm going to talk about the two of these in a moment because this, this is one of the interesting things about um, Unity. Now, before I get too far into this one, this is a walk forward animation clip, and you may have noticed Unity, uh, Unity Chan has just disappeared. Where'd you go? Well, if you want to find a character, what you can do is single click in here, and ah, this is another interesting one. If you click on the timeline, you might notice that as soon as I click away onto another object, it loses track of it. And this is one of those little gotchas up here. There's this lock symbol here. And what you can do is click it to lock it. And so now if I click away, it won't, uh, the timeline won't, uh, won't lose focus. 
because it's part of the problem which we're going to see in a moment. So if you click on Unity Tan and then hold the cursor over the scene and type the letter F, it uh, centers or focuses or finds, I don't know really what it means, and Unity Chant has jumped over to zero, 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 zero. Now this light blue means that these properties are being controlled by animation. This animated com component is necessary to actually control the other components in here. Well, that's a bit of a problem because it's zero. And if I position the cursor through here, you can see the animation clip is working. And that's all well and cool. And I can double click on it. And well, I was just trying to open it up here just to give you a little bit of a feel of all the different properties that this thing is, the animation clip has got. Just to show how many there are in there. You can see the animation clip moving the character, but the character is not actually moving forward. Well, there's this concept of root motion, and some animation clips will actually move the character forward, and other ones won't. So this one does move the character forward. And this just seems to be a mix between the two. We're going to come back to this one in a moment. But the problem with this is there's two solutions to this that I've seen. Um, one is what you can do, and it's what I started out doing, and I no longer do, but what I started out doing was to actually create a new object. Oops. And I'd call it something like Unity Chan Container. And I drop Unity Chan on the inside. Now, by dropping on top, it gets nested. And what Unity Chan is now is relative to the container. And so I can move the container around. And so we've got Unity in this container. And so what you can do is animate the container in a separate animation track. So we've got the container down here in an animation track. And I do a record. And I'm going to position one and then move forward for a bit and put it in position. Oops, move the button in position two. I've got the recording there. And so let's move that another way. If you extend an animation clip that's got loop defined, it'll just repeat it. And so keep repeating it. And so you can see we're moving the character at the same time as the animation is playing. This is where life gets a little bit tricky because you've got to get the speed exactly right for the animation to look good because otherwise the foot looks like it's slipping on the ground and you're doing a Michael Jackson moonwalk. Well, you can actually get in and edit these things and move the data points around. Um, and uh, But the better way to me just seems to be, no, just, just find animation clips that actually do what's called root motion. So I'm going to put Unity back at the top level because there's another way of solving that problem of it jumping back to zero, zero. And I'm going to show you what that one is now. So we're going to get rid of that. We're going to delete this one and extend this one out. This one's got root motion. So Unity Chan has jumped over to here and it's sort of like, oh darn, I didn't want Unity Chan. This location, by the way, is zero, zero. Um, the sphere where we wanted the scene is not at zero, zero in the scene. It's off at some other location. But what you can do is there's this feature called track offsets. And if you select apply scene offsets, it actually does the animation relative to where the character is in the scene, which is exactly what you want. So now, the character is working correctly, the the, speed, uh, the movement, uh, the distance and the feet are all sort of hitting the ground nicely and everything is nicely in sync, which is really what you want. So I like using root motion in the animation clips. Um, there's some settings, we might get to that another time. And you just have to remember to set the apply scene offset on the animation track so the character starts at the right position. Now, if I want the character to move at a different speed, there's a speed multiplier value here. And so if I want them walking at faster than normal, I might specify a value of 
and they walk faster. Got a little play button here so you can actually see what it really looks like. Um, let's go for a value of three. Hit the play button. You notice it's going even faster. And so um, you can work out where they're going to end up at what time point, and, and you, you might fiddle around the speed multiply, you might speed around the or fiddle around with where they start from and so forth. But uh, this seems to be a better way of controlling where the character is going to end up because the feet are always going to line up exactly on the right ground. Um, and you fiddle with the speed multiplier of the clip to adjust the speed the character is walking to get from one place to another. Um, and you've got all sorts of other capabilities in here. But I'm not going to get into all of that. So this was just to give a very quick introduction. Um, you have a timeline. You drop characters into the timeline to create a, a track. And on this track, you can then drop animation clips. And it's better to get one with a root motion um, included. Um, and you then, for walk animations, you can particularly can extend it out to loop. And that's how you get the character walking.